And so to start this off, let's, let's talk about when you might want to suspect mold as being a major player in your health. So there's some key symptoms and some key tests that, that we want to consider if we want to suspect mold. And one of them, it's a very, very common one, is burning mouth and burning tongue. So if you struggle with burning mouth and burning tongue, if that's a symptom that you have and you don't know why, this is a very, very common side effect of chronic mold and mycotoxin exposure. So burning sensation. We also sometimes see this burning neuropathy in the face. So extreme facial pain or burning neuropathy in the face. Uh, one of the hallmark symptoms commonly seen in people uh, with mold issues. We'll also see a hypersensitivity to supplements, not just supplements, but to chemical odors as well. So supplements, chemicals. So if you're reactive to per perfumes, soaps, lotions, you get in a cab and they've got one of those little air fresheners dangling, right? And it gives you a migraine headache. Very, very common to see people with mold issues being hypersensitive to chemicals and supplements. But in particular, with the hypersensitivity to supplements, what generally what we'll see is if the supplement supports or enhances methylation. Methylation is a chemical process in your body. It's, it's actually a detoxification pathway. And um, a lot of times when people get on supplements that enhance methylation, they find that their symptoms become worsened, meaning they, they don't feel better supplementing, they actually feel worse. So hypersensitivity to supplements or other chemicals. Oftentimes too, we'll see oxalate elevation. So what is an oxalate? An oxalate is a chemical that we can measure for, right? And so oftentimes in the urine, it's important if you're asking your doctor to measure this, that you ask them to measure a 24 hour urine collection for oxalate. Now, oxalate is a chemical byproduct that some molds can actually produce. It's actually been shown, that, for example, aspergillus, which is a type of mold that can live in your home, can actually produce oxalate. And we'll see oxalate, again, we'll see oxalate being higher in people that are in mold now, it's, it's important to, a distinction to make because not everybody in mold is going to have high oxalate and not everybody with high oxalate is going to be in a moldy environment. But it's one of those clues that we sometimes will look for if we're trying to piece it together. So if you've got an oxalate elevation, it can be mold, but it can also be um, chronic antibiotic use. A lot of people that have chronic antibiotic use, there's certain bacteria that help break oxalate down. Remember, we eat oxalates in our food. Spinach is rich in oxalate. Almonds are rich in oxalate. A lot of foods have high oxalate content. And if you don't have the microbiome to break oxalate down, if you don't have healthy bacteria that can break oxalate down, you can also have an elevation in your urine oxalate output over a 24-hour cycle of time. Um, and then again, understand that yeast overgrowth inside of you can also potentially produce higher levels of oxalates. So you could be eating high oxalate foods. You could have a yeast overgrowth inside of you. You could also have a mold issue uh, in the external environment. So oxalate can mean more than just mold, but it's one of those things that we look for that clues us in. Another one is low white blood cells, low red blood cells and low platelets. So if you've gone to the doctor year after year, you don't know why your white counts are always low or your red counts are always low, or you're always anemic. This is one of the common areas that mold can affect. Mold can impact. One of the ways that mold does is particularly uh, the mycotoxins themselves. The mycotoxins that mold produces will inhibit DNA um, synthesis. And so this goes back to when you're trying to produce new red blood cells, white blood cells, and platelets. If you've got that inhibition happening, then um, oftentimes we'll see those low white counts showing up early. A lot of, I've seen a lot of people that have come to see me over the years and they've been to the hematologists, you know, and they've had all the different types of bone marrow problems and cancers ruled out. And oftentimes we'll find mold as a primary driving issue behind why this can happen. Another one that can be, so these, again, this is a simple blood test, right? If you ask your doctor here, you can ask for a simple CBC. CBC stands for complete blood count, and all three of these markers 
are present on a, on a standard CBC that any doctor can order. Your, your histamine levels, increased histamine or histamine intolerance is another sign oftentimes. There's a condition called MCAS. We kind of briefly touched on it last week, but mast cell activation syndrome, we'll talk more about this in just a minute. But if you have a histamine intolerance, um, and, and, and there's a couple of different reasons why. One, we'll see histamine intolerance because you could be allergic to mold. And so if you're allergic to the mold that you're being exposed to, your IgE responses go up, driving histamine levels, which can cause, uh, over time, increases in histamine can cause a lot of different types of chemical disruption, predominantly inflammation, but also in intolerance. So there are certain foods that have histamine in them. Or that, um, or that help to increase levels of histamine. And so an intolerance to those types of foods or the symptoms of increased histamine, which you can measure, this is another one, this can be measured, can be measured in the blood. You can measure histamine levels. Um, you can also measure another compound that helps with histamine called tryptase. That's another compound that can be measured. So you can ask your doctor to measure your histamine and your tryptase levels. Uh, and if they're low, again, this is, uh, and oftentimes this is something that we see in people with mold issues. We'll also see high ferritin levels. Ferritin, when the ferritin is elevated, it's oftentimes a sign that the liver is being damaged. So high ferritin, same thing here with increased AST, that should be an ALT, not an AFT, but an ALT. That, those are two tests, two lab tests of amino uh, um, um, two lab tests that measure for liver functionality. And if they come back elevated chronically, you can suspect mold among other toxins, but high ferritin, AST and ALT, um, alanine aminotransferase and uh, aspartate aminotransferase um, are all potentials for mold damage. Because why? Because mycotoxins have to be transformed, biotransformed through the liver as it puts a lot of pressure on the liver and we'll see the liver take on damage when that occurs. Another issue is a decrease GFR. That GFR stands for glomerular filtration rate. This is a sign or a marker that the kidneys are slowing down and that the kidneys function is reducing. And this is common because some of the mycotoxins, the mold poisons, directly can damage your kidneys. And so by damaging your kidneys, your, your ability to filter, your kidneys ability to filter decreases. And that's what GFR is measuring. It's measuring that kidney filtration rate. So if, if, if all of these things are matching and all of your doctors have said, you know, we really don't know why your mouth burns and you're uh, oversensitive to chemicals and that you have abnormal low counts of, of white blood cells or platelets, etc. Because most doctors won't measure your oxalate or your histamine. They just won't. It won't be a standard course of tests that they run. Um, what typically does get run, it's like your ferritin is a common one that gets run. This uh, your AST and ALT get commonly get run, your GFR commonly gets run, and your CBC commonly gets run. Like these are the ones that if you get a general checkup, most doctors are going to run these as a standard course, whereas oxalate, not so much, histamine and tryptase, not so much. Sometimes you got to request those. But again, if these are coming back abnormal and you're chronically tired and you struggle with gastrointestinal symptoms, joint symptoms, brain fog, or neurological problems, then you want to think about mold as a primary uh, potential possibility. Now, especially this last one here, if you have a history in your home of either two things, water intrusion, meaning that you've had a roof leak or a busted pipe or a major uh, spill like a waterbed broke, um, a fish tank shattered, something like that where you've had major spillage, right? Or if you've had previous remediation. If, you, if you're near the coast like myself, when you get hurricanes and floods, you know, remediation, you know, when those types of things happen, you know, they got to come in and clean up the water damage. And so if you, you may have had where they, somebody has, has come out and cleaned up the damage, they didn't find mold, they cleaned up the damage early enough, but they didn't clean it up well enough. And, and that can be a breeding ground for mold. So if that's happened to you and you experience all these other things, you definitely want to start leaning toward mold as a, as a thought process. Now, there are other tests, and I talked about some of those last week. The reason I'm talking about these things this week is because these are things 
that if your doctor's not a mold expert and you're just watching this show trying to figure it out, these are things most doctors will run. They're not gonna tell you, no, I'm not gonna run that. So these are just tools I'm trying to give you that might give you some insight as to try to put things together and be your own kind of sleuth or detective, if you will, when your doctor maybe isn't trying to help you very much. Now, there are some other definitive tests, as I mentioned last week, you know, and one of the things that you can run or that you can have measured is your mycotoxin levels. And that's pretty darn definitive. If you have high levels of mycotoxins, you've got a mold problem. And so that's one. But if your doctor's not willing to order it, you know, again, these are common things. So sometimes you have to start where you're at and you have to get your doctor to do um, what they'll do. Hey, don't forget to check out the rest of the series right here. Make sure you hit subscribe below. And as always, thanks for tuning in.